Thank you, Jessamine. Thank you very much. Uh, I am, my name is Bob. I'm, I'm, I'm actually originally from Mayo. <laughs> just, just to lower the tone altogether. But, um, but I do identify as American. Uh, <laughs> um, welcome, everybody. It's great to see you all here because we're in Galway. It's a city of about 75,000, 80,000 people. And you are the one segment of Galway people who's managed to maintain a view of your ambition. Because <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed, Galway is the graveyard of ambition. That is, that is a nickname for Galway. I have met people and talked to them, and I will say to them, what brought you to Galway? And they're like, I came for a weekend 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's that thing where you, you get off the bus or off the train in Air Square, and you find one cool pub and three sound people, and that's it. <laughs> that's it, your life. Your, your, your life is over, you know, like, and it doesn't matter where you come from, like, you, you could be, you know, telling your friends, oh, I've, I've got a job in Galway, six figures, <laughs> no six figure job, <laughs> but it, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, you're like, oh, I'm all set, I'll go to Galway, and six weeks later, they're going to be ringing home, ringing their parents, going, send money, <laughs> send money, the job, oh, the job is gone, oh, the job is, the job is long gone, yeah, I am drunk, what about it, I'm happy. Galway's fantastic. <laughs> oh, there's always something happening in Galway. Uh, always something happening. I'm never doing it. I'm always drunk watching it. There's always something happening in Galway. Because that's it. You know, the, the, the graveyard of ambition. And it's around about this time of year that every dreadlocked prick <laughs> in the world arrives in Galway. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. Once it hits June 1st, you could be walking across the Sahara Desert <laughs> with your dreadlocks. Once it hits June 1st, this mystical force. Like, What's going on? What's go oh, it's June 1st. I have to go to Galway. I have to, uh, there's, a, there's a street band that needs me in Galway. And they all do the same thing. They'll all pile down Shop Street, our only street. Um, <laughs> go into a music shop, get themselves a bongo drum, sit outside learning how to play the bongo in public when they don't have enough rhythm to wank, let alone play a fucking musical instrument. And they eventually realize this, they swap and they get some juggling balls instead, get three juggling balls into the air at once, think that they've achieved their life's ambition, retire to a life of drinking Guinness and eating sunflower seeds and falafel in the street, discussing socialism and vegetarianism and, oh, I'm a celiac now, you're a celiac, oh, we're all celiacs, oh, what? Oh, yeah, I was diagnosed last week, not by a doctor, by a magazine. I'm a celiac. I'm definitely a celiac. And they'll have someone who's, they'll always have one friend who's in, do something with your life. I know you master juggling. Go and apply and do one of those courses out in the art college. You seem a bit artistic. And they're like, yeah, yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe that's the outlet that I crave. So they go and they do some course out in the art college. Three years later, when they've gotten their shit together, uh, they put in an application, which is fine, because now all the college fees are going to be free, paid for by the government, because they are now on disability. <laughs> because the sandwich board they've been carrying for the last three years has carved permanent grooves into their shoulders and they've got chronic tendonitis from handing out flyers for health food shops and they go and they do their useless fucking degree and they end up bitter and angry on stage at Bright Club talking about the time. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I have a degree in film. Much, much better than my parents' reaction, I have to say. <laughs> I have a, a, a oh, sci-fi, you like this. Uh, I have an idea for a film I want to make. It's, it's called Terminator 9, right? <laughs> what happens in Terminator 9 in the opening scene? I get sent back in time to stop them making every Terminator after Terminator 2. So, so that's coming out uh, in the fall. Uh, or is it? No, I succeeded in my mission. Oh, mind blown. Oh. <laughs> Sci-fi, whoa. Oh, what's gonna happen next? Find out in Terminator 10, what? Oh. Um, 
Actually, I was watching uh, the uh, Back to the Future trilogy there at, uh, at Christmas, and uh, you know, it's 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 pretty. The thing about uh, studying film is I had to go through a class called film analysis. It's where you watch your favorite films and TV shows over and over and over <laughs> until they're not your favorite films or TV shows anymore. And I'm watching uh, Back to the Future three just to refresh your memories. Uh, in Back to the Future 3, Marty and the Doc are stuck back in the Old West. It's 1885. They haven't, uh, they haven't got any uh, petrol to put it. Sorry, gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't got any gasoline, petrol to put into the car to get it to 88 miles an hour to get back to the future. Petrol hasn't been discovered in 1885. What are they going to do? They're discussing options. Marty turns to the Doc and says, Doc! We could get a horse to pull the car. How fast can a horse go? Doc says, 40, maybe 50 miles an hour. Then Marty says, what about a team of horses? <laughs> lots of blank faces. Going on. I thought this was Bright Club. I, was I didn't do science in college. I, I did film. Uh, I failed to see how a team of horses goes any faster than one horse <laughs> can go. Still a lot of blank faces. Um, I'll maybe illustrate this with an example. It's me with my athletic physique, right? <laughs> if I was running downhill with a stiff breeze behind me on a good day, I reckon I could maybe touch 20 miles an hour. <laughs> If you were rolling down the fucking hill. <laughs> but but here's here's my point. Here's my like if I start to hold hands with somebody as I'm running down that hill, my speed doesn't suddenly jump to forty miles <laughs> per hour. It would be brilliant if that was the way that physics worked. <laughs> then if I wanted to go home to Mayo, fifteen of us could meet up on Air Square. <laughs> Hold hands to 300 miles an hour up the N17. And I'd be home in 15 minutes. So, so just, just, just keep it in mind. Just keep it in mind, guys. Um, there used to be actually an, an ad on TV years ago for a, a lady's body spray called Impulse. Uh, men just can't help acting on impulse. That was the tagline. It was like, no, it's 2019. You need to fucking show a bit more restraint. <laughs> but the ad consisted of a lady in her bedroom. She's uh, she's got her back to the camera. She's naked. She's spraying herself with the deodorant because she's she's just out of the shower, or maybe she's just running late. <laughs> Lots of laughter of recognition from over here. I'm just saying, just saying, just saying. Anyway. The ad, it cuts to the lady now walking down the street, now fully clothed, as you'd expect. And <laughs> as she's walking down the street, this guy passes her by and he's like, <sighs> catches, catches the fragrance. And he, he's overcome by the smell. He, he runs off to a florist, gets a bunch of flowers, runs back and presents them to the girl. And then the, the voiceover kicks in. When a man you've never met before suddenly gives you flowers, oh, that's impulse. <laughs> Ladies, when a man you've never met before suddenly gives you flowers, that is fucking weird. That's, that's, that's the, like, imagine I pass you in the street. <laughs> run off to a forest, run back. <laughs> Pizza for you. You smell gorgeous. I don't think you're going to find that impulse. No, you look fucking, you look terrified. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. The only place I've seen a strange man for present a strange woman with a flower is outside Supermax at two o'clock in the morning. Like, uh, one, of the, one of the two quid roses from one of the flower sellers. That's not impulsive or romantic. That's, that's desperation. <laughs> uh, it's a different fragrance altogether. <laughs> Kim Kardashian, well, Kim Kardashian's desperation. Just before, just before I leave you guys, um, I was mentioning before that uh, Galway is the, the graveyard of ambition. And uh, 
that implies a, a serious negative, but it needn't be a negative. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of problems in the world. We're not here to go into them all. We're here to have the crack. <laughs> but <laughs> one, one, particular, one particular issue that's going on at the moment is that there is a, there's a refugee crisis happening in, in Europe. There's lots of refugees coming in from uh, North Africa and from the Middle East. And opinion is divided on how that should be handled. On the left, you have people who say, let's open our hearts, let's open our borders, be more humanitarian, let them all in. <laughs> and on the right, you have people saying, fuck those guys, come on over here, taking our jobs. <laughs> and they'll always make the point. And besides, they could be terrorists. And to those people I say, fuck it. It's grand. <laughs> Send them all to Galway. <laughs> it's the graveyard of ambition. <laughs> if you think someone is an ISIS agent, send them to Galway. Within a week, they'll have forgotten why they're here. <laughs> they'll, be, they'll be down the Spanish arch with a bag of cans in one hand and a joint in the other. Someone going, Ahmed, what brings you to go away? And Ahmed is like, I don't know, I think I'm studying film. <laughs> That's it for me, folks. Thank you very much for supporting Bright Club. Hand you back to Jasmine.